I'm faced with China coming into the area. They're now controlling the buying stations, the grain elevators, and they're controlling the food. In red is where they're making a lot of these purchases. Some of these are close to military installations. If you were going to be thinking in the future about making a belligerent move with your military, you'd stockpile some food. Are they getting ready for war? China's really quietly stealing the agriculture sector in the United States. Will we be able to stay on the land and continue to farm? Farmers depend on good farm ground to make it or break it. Before China started coming into this area, I could buy decent farm ground for $2,500 to $3,000 an acre. Uh, now it's $15,000, $20,000. I simply can't compete with that. The land is everything to me. That's what my daddy told me growing up. This land is everything. My forefathers were slaves on the Boyd Plantation. After the Civil War, a lot of black families stayed on these plantations and you either became two things, the sharecropper or the ability to purchase land. My great-grandfather bought 117 acres from the Boyd Plantation and I still have some of those original acres today. And now I'm faced with China coming into the area and taking those freedoms away by purchasing the land, by buying the companies. I'm really at their liberty. They're not controlling the buying stations, the grain elevators, and they're controlling the food. Still not seed technology, so this is our food security. This is national security. For me to lose the farm would be losing myself. This is who I am. John, I have to first say that is an amazing story. Thank you. I mean, you talk about a family history and deciding to do what you wanted to do. Yes, so my grandfather taught us how important land ownership was. Uh, every step you take, every step you make requires land ownership and never, never, never sell the farm. And, yeah. and that's when my father didn't sell it and he passed it on to me. And hopefully, if I can hold on, I'd be able to pass those original acres on to my children. As and well. now that's being threatened. That is correct. And now uh, China's come in, uh, Dr. Phil, buying land at these auctions and running land prices, you know, through the roof. And, and uh, people need to understand uh, farmers need good farm ground in order to compete. It's, it's not like a job where you go out and you work 20 years and you get a raise. Uh, farmers rely on good farm ground to expand their farm, farming operation so that they can increase their revenue. And when you have the opportunity, Dr. Phil, to buy adjoining land uh, that joins your farm or in that surrounding area where you farm at, mm -hmm. uh, farmers try to jump on that opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah. so you would have adjoining land that you could have purchased in the past for, say, 3,500 an acre. They're coming yes. in now paying 15000 $20,000. $20,000 an acre. And guess what that does to property taxes for uh, a poor farm and families just barely holding on and paying, and paying your annual uh, taxes. It runs the taxes through the roof. And uh, what's troubling to me is uh, the federal government isn't doing anything about it. Now, when, the, when these auctions happen, who represents them at those auctions? Sometimes, Dr. Phil, it'll be the little white guy with the ball cap that's bidding for them. And they set up these dummy corporations uh, and, uh, and fractional corporations. And then when the deed is recorded, it's owned by China. Uh, they're really savvy about how they moved into this country and infiltrated uh, the agriculture sector in, in the right. United States. All right, so they buy up everything around you. Then you get all of this grain and you go sell it. And where you sell it is owned by who now? It's owned by China, Smithfield Foods. And that's what people don't understand. They say, well, can't, can't you just go sell somewhere else? Dr. Phil, farmers sell within one hour's driving distance to their farming operations. And I'm no different. It's about harvest time, time sensitive. You go out, you harvest, you get a truckload and you sell it, you come back and you repeat that process until you finish. And so you can't expand your farm and you're, you're selling to a Chinese buyer. If they decide to stop buying, I'll be in trouble. China's bought land right here to my left. They're buying companies like Smithfield Foods. And that blue truck and trailer is what I 
drive to Smithfield Foods to haul soybeans, corn, and wheat on, to sell to a company that's owned by China. And this is a cry and plea to corporate America. It's a cry and plea to uh, politicians to take action and put some laws in place to stop China from selling this stuff here that I'm standing on. Stop allowing them to buy uh, precious soil. The Chinese Communist government is targeting my people and conducting full-fledged genocide. I am an Uyghur. My homeland was occupied in 1949 by the People's Republic of China. They are facing mass detention. Millions of people are in the concentration camps. I came to the United States in 1989. I was invited to speak at one of the think tanks in Washington, D.C. Six days after that, my sister and my aunt both were taken on the same day as a retaliation for my activism. They released my aunt several months later, but last five years, my sister's in jail right now. I am doing my advocacy at the cost of my sister's freedom. When I doubled down my efforts, the Chinese government published all kinds of false um, articles about me, saying that I was stealing other people's photo and claiming this is my missing relatives and spreading lies about China. The book, George Orwell's 1984, is nothing compared to the Chinese Communist Party QR scanning codes on every home, GPS tracking devices on every vehicle. They are expanding everywhere, including United States. Now Samuel is also joining us. He was born in Hong Kong, but has been a U.S. citizen for nearly 30 years. Hong Kong has been a part of China since 1987, and in 2020, Samuel became the first American on Hong Kong's most wanted list. I might have started my life in the U.S. under the fear of retaliation and persecution by the CCP, but because of the safe harbor I found here, I have grown to be a fugitive and a thorn in the side of the Communist Party in China. My personal work here in the U.S. are being monitored um, and being surveilled uh, constantly, uh, but I do not feel and will not yield to that level of threat because it's a tactic that I think the Chinese government have used. I ask you two to come together because both of you are U.S. citizens being targeted by the Chinese government. And what do you remember about the Chinese soldiers coming into your house? Um, my dad was taken away, then the soldiers came over to get my mom. She had me in her arm. They grabbed me so hard, so rudely, and they almost throw me over to my grandma's arm. And my mom and dad used to say that I cried so hard, she could hear me crying from miles and miles away for hours. Now, you have spoken out since you've been here at some of the things that have been so upsetting to so many. And nearly six years ago, you were part of a, a panel in DC and it really changed your life because what happened a, a week after you were on that panel and spoke out? My own sister and my aunt were taken away. They are 1,400 kilometers, which is more than 900 miles away from each other, but exactly the same day from two different parts. One is retired medical doctor. I always carry my sister's photo. That's her. And my aunt is a retired school teacher and they both were taken away. I have not seen a proof of life, no video, no picture, no information. Six days after you were on the panel. Yes. Now, Samuel, how did you find out you were on the most wanted list in, in China? Well, I will always remember, it was July 30th in 2020, and I was actually asleep in my apartment in Los Angeles, and I received a bunch of phone calls and text messages. And then I woke up the next morning and found myself a wanted fugitive. What happened was that the Chinese state media televisions have published a report that they have issued an arrest warrant for me, an American citizen on American soil, 
based on the national security law that has just been enacted in Hong Kong a month before. It's almost as if I got a knock on the door, but not by American law enforcement, not by anybody here that was authorized to be here, but from the Hong Kong and Chinese CCP law enforcement mm -hmm. all the way from Hong Kong and from China. Okay. And both of you feel like you are surveilled here in the United States, correct? Yes. You, you think you're followed and mm -hmm. monitored? And being harassed verbally and attacked verbally. Um, Absolutely horrible. I am not an expert on geopolitics and certainly not on geoeconomics, but I've got a really good friend who damn sure is, and his name is Kyle Bass. He is the founder and chief investment officer of Heyman Capital Management. He is a life member of the Council on Foreign Relations, and he has testified as an expert witness before Congress and has lectured on global economics national security, geopolitics, and the architect of the Chinese financial system. He knows a thing or two about what we're talking about. Pleasure to be here, Dr. It's good Phil. to see you again. Good to see you. How's their economy doing right now? I mean, uh, I actually think it's the worst it's ever been. So you have, um, they, have a, they have leverage in their economy. And you might, we all remember the global financial crisis in 2008. We had about one times our GDP in our banking system and if you include non-banks, it was 1.7 times. China is three and a half times levered to a system that's only been at capitalism for about 20 years. They, they ascended the WTO in 2001. So imagine they've got like 20 plates spinning and all the plates are starting to fall. So they have a youth unemployment crisis where the youth of China, they admitted 21% of the youth doesn't have a job. And some Chinese scholars say that's as high as 46% today. They have a real estate crisis where they let real estate grow unabated, and that was the Chinese miracle, growing their GDP through real estate. Now it's gone the other way. They've got a banking crisis, and they've got a local government finance crisis. All of those things are happening simultaneously as we sit here today. Why are they stockpiling so much grain? If you imported 40% of your food, uh, and you were going to be thinking in the future about making a belligerent move with your military, you'd stockpile some food. And the interesting thing about the stockpile is, as we entered COVID at the end of uh, 2019, early 2020, their largest food stockpiles uh, were near Shanghai. They didn't touch their food stockpiles when people were quite literally locked in their apartments for months on end. So if you're not gonna access your food stockpile when people are starving, when will you access your food stockpile? Are they getting ready for war? I mean, it, my view is yes. My view is if you listen to Xi Jinping since 2017, not the media stories, go read his speeches. And if you read what he says, he's been telling you since 2017 that he, his life's goal, his life's mission is the reunification of the great Chinese race, which means reunifying Taiwan forcibly or peacefully, whichever one uh, they'll go with. If you look at what they've done in their legal system, if you look at in, on, on the mainland, if you look at what they're building on the mainland, every single arrow points to moving to war. I know we don't want this, I don't want it, you don't want it, the world definitely doesn't need a war like that. Uh, but it just, if, if you just look at it with the facts that sit on the page, I, I say the writing's been on the Great Wall for a long time period of time, we just have to go look at it. Well, Dr. Phil, based on everything he's saying, why are we in the United States letting this continue uh, for China to come and purchase land? Well, well, they are purchasing a lot of land, and we've got a map here that shows counties in states with Chinese-owned land. A lot of this, sadly, is strategically purchased, and after the break, we're gonna take a look at this you're not going to like what you're getting ready to hear. So you don't want to go anywhere. We'll be right back. They're strategically buying land around that. This is not Dr. random. Dr. Phil, this is a national security threat to America. I mean, look at that map. We're back and talking about the impact that China is having on all of you, all of you in the studio audience, me, all, all of you at home. And, you know, some of this is invisible. As John was saying, they're buying up land. And sometimes they send a, 
white guy in a ball cap. Yeah, and that's right. He's back there saying, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll bid on that. I'll that's bid on right. that. I'll bid on that. But they're buying strategically. Is that a, fair to say? That's absolutely true. And I, I want to take a look. In red is where they're making a lot of these purchases. And some of these are close to military installations. And that really concerns me. So we have some of these, like Dugway uh, Proving Gown right here. Let's take a look at what is there. Military equipment, biological, chemical weapons defense systems. These are strategically important to the United States, right? I mean, this is important stuff for our defense. And they're juxtaposed right next to it. That's not an accident, is it? No. Then you come over to the Missouri Air Force Base. You've got B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber Base, Missile and Drone Operations, MQ-9 Reaper, Global Strike Command, three Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Wings, Air Force Entire Bomber Force, Nuclear Command Control and Communication System, and they bought land right next to it. And then you can come over here to the Virginia uh, Naval Air Station and look at this. They're all right next to it. Aircraft carriers, submarines, destroyers, amphibious assault ships. These are things that are critical to us. North Carolina, airborne and special operations forces, rapid deployment capabilities mobilized to international crises or conflicts. They're strategically buying land around that. This is not Dr. random. Dr. Phil, this is a national security threat to America. I mean, I mean, look at that map. If, if this bothers y'all, raise stuff. your hand. Okay, I, I just wanna know if you think we're sitting up here talking like crazy conspiracy theorists, or you think, no, this does not make common sense. <laughs>